you now have the lens maker's equation. So in the unlikely event that you're going to make a lens and you need a certain focal length, well, that tells you what to radii to grind and what kind of material to use, etc. In the more likely event that you're going to use a lens, then you just want the thin lens equation. All right, and the thin lens equation really is similar. Before, let's see, we had n1 over the object distance and n1 over the image distance, but remember we divided the n1 to the other side. So we'll just say 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. And remember that was n2 minus n1 over n1, 1 minus 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2, all that stuff, but we just named all that, the focal length. So the shorter version is just that we have this thing called the focal length that includes all the properties of the lens. And yes, we defined it by doing an experiment, by having the light coming in parallel, and the focal length is a specific image distance, but it's the one for all the light rays parallel, so it is a property of the lens. So instead of writing all that lens maker's equation stuff, we just say focal length. Often when you use a lens, you don't actually know the two radii. You just get a thin lens with a focal length and you just use it. Often there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. So this mathematically will always give you your image distance and your object distance if you have uh, something near a lens. The other equation I'll give you is the magnification. And you know normally I would derive this and prove it to you, but I'm getting tired of the, all the geometry. So I'm just going to tell you that the magnification m equals minus image distance over object distance, minus that ratio, okay? Now, you can do it mathematically, but let's do a few cases uh, by drawing them, and we'll see that the math also works. The way we're going to draw them is sometimes referred to as the three easy rays, okay? So ray tracing is a very complicated procedure, but there happen to be three rays that are easy to do in any optical system or any simple uh, thin lens. So let's draw um, an optical axis and a lens, and often it's drawn like this. With the down arrows mean it's a converging lens. We haven't done uh, uh, um, concave lenses, but we're not going to. We're just doing convex lenses. Um, so let's see, if it had a focal length, say, to here, and also on that side, it would be to there. So usually you draw the focal length on both sides. And we're going to do the case where the image is at 2f. Or I'm sorry, the object is at 2f. So there's another 2f here. So we're marking the focal length, and we're marking two times the focal length. And the object you usually draw is a little arrow sticking up like that. And you've got to think about where do the light rays go that come off the tip of the object? Because you know the ones that sort of come off the base, you know they'll go right through the optical axis. You can think of them as focusing at, at the same spot. If these off the tip, we want to know where they go. That'll really tell us what the image looks like, what its magnification is, where it is. Okay. So let's see, what are the three easy rays? Well, one, imagine the little rays of light coming off this tip. One ray will go straight to the lens. And we know that parallel light, when it hits a lens, goes through the focal point. So it'll do that. Hey, let's put this up here. And another ray, you could imagine one that goes through the focal point to the lens. Well, if you think about reversibility, that one would have come this way and would have gone to the focal point. So that ray must come out straight, like that. <laughs> and then the other easy ray, I meant to draw this up here, will go right through the center. So if you work out the refraction, you get sort of a bend one way when you hit the front surface and a bend out the other way when you hit the other surface, and it essentially goes straight. It goes un, un, unperturbed. So you draw one that goes straight through the middle. And if you do your geometry right, all three will intersect, and that is your image. So if you put an object at twice the focal length in front of a lens, you'll get an image twice the focal length behind the lens, and its magnification will be 1, right? Because this distance 2f, s object is 2s, f, s image is 2f, 2f over 2f is 1, and the negative sign tells you that it's going to be inverted. So that's one place you can put um, the object. How would we really magnify something or demagnify something? 
because a lens doesn't have a set magnification. It just has a set focal length. You can actually get all kinds of different magnifications depending on where you put things. Let's see. So here's another one. And here's the lens. And I'll put, again, uh, F here and uh, 2F here. And I'll put F there and uh, 2F there. And now, just for fun, let's put the object uh, way out. What happens if the object's really far away? Well, not really far away, but farther away than 2F. Well, three easy rays. One ray comes straight through to the lens, goes through the focal point. Uh, another ray goes through the focal point to the lens. Oh, I missed. And uh, comes out straight like that. And the third ray goes right through the middle. So it helps to do it with a ruler. Or it helps to cheat as you draw the ray. <laughs> All right, so what is that one going to do? Well, it looks like that one makes a little image like that. Again, it's inverted. It's demagnified, right? Because we see from this ray tracing that when the object distance is really big, we know that the image distance is going to be really small. Right? So this is a constant. If this gets if object distance gets big, this quantity gets small, so this quantity has to be bigger, so this has to be smaller. So when you pull this thing away, the image comes closer and closer. Actually, it approaches the focal point, and the magnification gets smaller and smaller, and it stays inverted. If you get this really far away, you just get a point of light at the focal point, pretty much. Let's go um, the other way. Let's put the object between f and 2f. Here we go. Let's see. There we go. And there's our lens. And um, there is F and 2F. Um, there's F. There's F. There's 2F. There's F. I don't really need to label 2F anymore. But. OK. Now we're going to put the object inside of 2F, but outside of F. There it is. Three easy rays. So one ray comes straight to the lens and goes through the focal point, as we know parallel rays would do. One ray goes through the focal point. Oh, I didn't draw the lens big enough. To the lens and straight out. And one ray goes um, through the center like that. So now you can see this image is magnified. As uh, the object distance becomes small, this becomes big, this has to become small, this has to become big. Right? So as you get this object distance closer, the image distance has to get bigger. Now if the image distance gets bigger, the magnification is going to go up. So you say, well, magnification, that's exciting. Let's push it even closer. All right. Let's put the thing on the focus and see what happens. Maybe we can magnify forever. Um, and the focal points or F and 2F. You really just need F. Let's put it right here, right on F. And there's F as well. All right. Well, uh, one is going to go to the lens and to the focal point. And another one is going to go through the center. And look at that. Those came out parallel. And one, you would attempt to draw through the focal point into the lens, but you'll never get there. That ray doesn't work. But what you can see is these rays come out parallel because that's what happens, right? If you have a point source of light at the focus of a lens, the rays come out parallel. Now, you're used to seeing them come out this kind of parallel. But else, this also tells you what happens with a lens is uh, when something is at the focus, if, if it's a point source on axis, those rays come out straight. If it's a point source off axis, those rays come out parallel, but at an angle. Okay? And this only really works for small angles and paraxial rays. I'm drawing it bigger here so you can see it. But also, if we drew this down and did it, those rays would go off at an angle. Okay? So points of light in the focal plane of the image, of the lens, also come out parallel. They just come out parallel 
at different angles. And that's how they're able to form an image, even if something's really far away. When I showed you the light forming an image of, uh, when the light was really far away, essentially at infinity, and it formed an image on the table, that's because actually there was a little bit of an angular difference of the light coming from different parts of the light. You were seeing sort of the top of the light and the bottom of the light. That slight angular difference was enough to focus it to make an image that was really small. 